So here we go then, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Recap, the show where I get the five takeaways from my guest each week. This week, I'm joined by James. So I get his takeaways from Towns. 4-4 draw with Charlton. Um, have you got over it yet, everybody? What a game it was. James, you were there in the away end. Very interesting afternoon. How would you sum it up? And thanks for joining me. Um, I, I couldn't speak about it until now recently. People ask me at work and I'm just literally like, just just don't. Um, I don't actually genuinely think that you'll see anything like it again at all. I can't remember anything remotely. The, the closest thing that I can think to is when Liverpool came back from AC Milan but that's not even that's not even close um I don't think you'll see anything like it again um and it was just an afternoon of absolute madness really yeah it's you know that that was a packed out way of course it's a very different atmosphere to what it was last year on you know when Paul Cook got sacked and everything but we'll get onto that later on um but yeah 2-0 2-2 4-2 4 Crazy, crazy game. That, that them nine minutes out of time. You know, as you said, I don't think it's ever going to happen again. If it happens again, then something's gone wrong. Um, but let's talk about your first takeaway, mate. Um, your first takeaway is game management because it's now we've been okay with game management in you know in some games this season. But there's been times Port Vale game, you know, on the Tuesday night, and especially this game. Yeah, expand on that, my friend. Uh, it's just it's just about decision making. You know, you'd hate to lose a two goal lead at the best of times in one game. But actually, if you think back, like say to Port Vale, that's three two nil leads we've had that we've thrown away. We were, you know, fair enough against Port Vale. We got the goal back. Um, fair enough against Charlton. You know, we've we've got the the goals back the first time, uh, and then well the, we scored first, and then we got them back. You know, to four four two. But it's it's just the players need to be making better decisions on the pitch, especially, you know, in a game, you know, when you're 2-0 up in the game, if it comes back to 2-2, that's fine. But, you know, 4-2, 93 minutes or whatever it is, 94, 95, there is absolutely no way that you should be conceding one goal, really, let alone two. Um, it's, it's just about making better decisions as a footballer. You know, you can say about McKenna and talk about Keo, which I might come on to in a little bit, bringing him on. Was that the right decision? Maybe, maybe not. But as a football player who's playing, you know, League One football, you need to be making better decisions when you've got that 4-2 um, goal league. You know, talk about Morsey. 4-3 um, it is. He's got Ladafa on his left. He's through on goal. Um, decides to take it on, have a shot. Thirty-five seconds later, the ball's in the back of our net, and it's just about. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Sam Bozzi. I think he's one of the utmost professionals, and and you know contributes to so many aspects of the pitch. Whether it's you know defending or through balls or even getting in and scoring goals like he did on Saturday. But for him, it's just a simple pass left to Ladapo, and he's he's taking it in the corner. Um, so it's just about decisions of the pitch, really. Yeah, he just had tunnel vision, didn't he? Because he scored earlier on. He just wants he wants another one just to, you know, he just enjoyed that celebrations and yeah, unfortunately he did the wrong decision and they went up the pitch and scored. And, you know, quick sort of segue away from your second takeaway quickly, but I want to talk about um the goals we did concede. Is that concerning the defending wise or it's just it's just one of those freak games? Uh, do you know what? I'm gonna be hated for saying this, but I think two goals were Walton's fault. I think Walton is Walton is one of the best keepers we've had in a very very long time. You know, um, we've had a lot of excellent keepers over the over the you know the years that I've been supporting town. Um, one where he got lobbed, got caught in no man's land. I think it was the fourth. Um, he's decided to sort of come for it, hasn't made that decision, and has been lobbed by a header from four yards out. Um, and there was another one where he's parried it just gone straight I think it's a second uh, first or second he's parried it and it's gone straight to their striker and don't get me wrong again I absolutely love Christian Walton I think he's an absolutely fantastic keeper who has saved us from so many games but I'd actually put a couple of the goals down to him um, making poor decisions um, and, and Keo, you know the majority of the goals came from crosses you know, they came from wide play where we haven't dealt with the ball in the box. And that's why you want to bring Richard Keogh on, which is fair enough. He's got taken off for Wes Burns. Now, the fourth one, 
came from where Burns would have been on the pitch, the cross. Is there an argument to say that Wes Burns would have would have gone to to block that ball? I don't know. I'm not going to say yes or no. It's just you know food for thought, really. Um, and again, Keo's very very experienced, but I, is it the right decision? Like I said, food for thought, really. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those you just don't know. It's because it's it's happened a few times this season where we've made subs where you thought, oh, maybe not. But yeah, we we do trust McKenna and stuff. Um, we're going to get on to that. Do you know, actually, let's talk about that quickly now because we have got a quality of the whole squad impact subs and everything. Sometimes it can work, sometimes it can't work. Um, so that is your next takeaway, really, because um, we have got a quality squad. Even with players out injured, when they come back, they're going to be fantastic. And we are getting a bit stretched now a little bit because... You know, Burgess is available, he's, but he's still not fully fit because of what happened to him. Uh, maybe if he came on, he would have been completely different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it, yeah the, the the quality of, of the squad is absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's a, it, like I always say, it's an absolutely brilliant headache for a manager ha- manager to have. Who do you start? Um, and luckily, we've got a, a manager that is an absolute tactician. He'll religiously watch how the team has played beforehand. Um, who do you think is in the right role? Do you start a striker like Jackson who's going to get quick in behind? Do you need more of a strong striker like Ladapo who's going to hold the ball up for, um, to play it back to the tens to make a third man run with our with our wingers who, um, we'll talk about it later, but again, have, have been absolutely fantastic. Um, and actually, the, the three subs that came on apart from Keo, I mean, it was not a lot of Keo to do, not a lot of time to um, for Keo to do a lot. But Edward, obviously, Ladapo, absolutely fantastic finish. You know, lovely to see him confident enough to get the ball spin and, and smash it into the bottom corner. Um, Edwards again, he's an absolute threat. I imagine it being a right back's worst nightmare when he comes on at, at ninety minutes and he's step over in and, and and making you go for hot dogs for fun and things like that um, as he's come on. Um, and Harness, a, a lot of people have been criticising Harness. I think he's a cracking player. He's, he's made a few mistakes, don't get me wrong. Maybe that's not enough game time for him. Um, and that could be the only uh, one of the cons against having such a good squad rotation and, and playing different players don't build up the momentum of getting uh, getting the game time that they need. But, you know, I, feel, I think when he's on the ball, he does have the potential to have a real quality about him. So it's, it's, it's pros and cons, really. Pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, let's talk about actually your third takeaway, and it is goals from all areas and different players scoring goals. We score from a set piece. Ladapo is definitely a pick of the bunch with the goal because that was one hell of a finish. Yeah, um, but yeah. Expand on that, my friend. Well, we're scoring from corners first of yeah. all, which you know is is just oh, um, honestly, it's it's fantastic. What great header by by Fridge as well. But I think that breaks up for me personally. It breaks up from sitting 7th, 6th, 5th, 8th to really being up the table is having an opportunity or having players that can score from all areas of the pitch. And like I said, going back to McKenna being a tactician, he will make that happen by creating the right spaces on the pitch, whether it's Morsey driving down the middle and getting one like he did the other day, whether it's Ladapo coming on, smashing it, whether it's Burns or, or or Leaf crossing one in for someone to tap in. Um, you know, we had four four different goal scorers, four different positions, really, who scored on Saturday. You've got Ladapo striker, John Jewell striker slash 10. You've got Morsey, who's really a centre midfield, central midfielder. And you've got Fridge, who's the centre back as well. And it's not a lot of times where you can say, well, actually, one of the three, one of each of the three areas on the pitch has is, is, is come and scored a goal. Um, and it's just nice to think, you know, actually, who do I start? You know, there's not that kind of historic thing of, right, you've got your 11 who you start every week and then you've got your five, your five players who you might bring on. Um, it's it's the quality of the whole squad for the right game, which, you know, um, is a credit to McKenna and a credit to the side as well. Um, we said about, um, what we're going to say about it's it's great because the team's, kind of mentality towards winning is so good that they're not, you know, getting in strops if they're not playing. They're yeah. just so buzzing for anybody who starts to get that win because the goal is for everybody is, is to go up, which, you know, is exactly the right thing you want. Yeah, definitely. And I want to, I want to, I was going to mention the player that you've sort of highlighted, um, but I want to talk about the difference of, the atmosphere from last year to this year because it was 
completely different, you know, because yeah, yeah, toxic last year, this year, even though it was four for a lot of disappointed faces, frustration. I'm sure, I'm sure, some some fans are thinking, how the hell did we lose a four two lead, you know, and all that sort of stuff? Because it did feel like a defeat afterwards, but yeah, the atmosphere was different yeah, yeah, last year. Yeah. Oh, massively. I was there last year as well, um, and I just remember just thinking, you know, we are in a really, really dark place here. Um, players didn't players weren't playing for the manager players weren't playing for the badge the manager you know did he want to be there at the time old, old cookie i don't know i think he was a bit at his wits end and a bit lost really um players you know like i said not playing fans getting on the players back we have the incident with toto at the end of the game where he's you know he had a fight with a fan didn't he um and it's there's just absolutely no comparison this year and i think people will be annoyed you know i've, I've seen people say um, you know, nine minutes out and, and kind of blame it on the ref. Now, I, I'm i going to say you should have 15 minutes, 20 minutes added on and still not concede two goals, really. You know, I don't I don't think that's... It's, I don't think us conceding two goals is to do with how many minutes are left. I think it's to do with game management. We've already spoken about that, so I'll go away from that. Um, but, oh, it's just a, it's just a different a different league. It's, it's, it's completely different. And it's so nice to see, you know, and, and town fans will forget about it. It's still we've still gone away from home, scored four goals and taken a point. It's not the end of the world, um, but the fans will get back, you know, get back, get back on it, and, and it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It will do. Um, but let's um, highlight the player you wanted to highlight. And of course, Leif Davis, who has become a bargain signer now. A lot, you know, on his day he wasn't the greatest, but he had a lot of jet lag and all that sort of stuff. But he's been fantastic. He's been someone a lot of town fans have been talking about the last few weeks because he has been class. He's just been phenomenal. Um, like I say, his debut, I remember thinking, watching pre-season and watching Greg Lee and thinking, how on earth have you, have you started this guy over Greg Lee? Greg Lee's an absolute animal. Uh, and he still is, you know, he's, he hasn't obviously been injured and things like that, but um, oh, he's just been absolutely phenomenal. What a steal for a million. I know it's League One, but still, he's a, he's a player that you could probably take, I'd go as far as to say up to the Prem. Really, you know, that's what we're aiming for. Easily a championship player. Um, and I know we got rolled over for one of the goals, but happens to happens to all good players. Um, but he's just he's got a quality about him. You know, he's got a, a, a real quality where you can see he's played in the Prem, the right pass at the right time, the right run at the right time. Um, and actually a lot of people have been saying to me, Oh, but you know, Burnsy hasn't had a good season this season, you know, and he hasn't been. But actually, I think that's also outweighed by how well the left-hand side is doing because everything last year came down the right. You know, Burns was on absolute fire, fair enough. And he hasn't been, don't get me wrong, he's no, playing nowhere near as well as he was last year. But also, you've got Davis, who is playing phenomenally well on that left-hand side and is just making such such a difference. I love him, absolutely love him. Yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, he has been unbelievable. And I'm sorry to everybody watching this video. I look like Casper the Ghost. It is Halloween, but I'm trying to get my lighting thing. It's just been bothering me the whole time. I want people to let know I look like Casper the Ghost at the moment. Um, but anyway, enough of that. Um, your, your final takeaway, my friend, is just, yeah, keep your heads up. Keep your momentum going because we are still second in the league. Um, of course, we've got our break for Cups. You know, we've got the FA Cup against Bracknell Town in the first round. But, yeah, keep the momentum going. Absolutely. You know, people like to say people get come away disappointed, um, and I was. You know, I don't think I spoke for the whole way from from Charlton Station until Liverpool Street. Um, not even to Liverpool Street, right the way to Ipswich. I just sat with a McDonald's in hand, you know, crying my eyes out. No, not quite, but um, but yeah, you, you've got to look at the season as a whole. You know, it's seven. It's it's seven points from three games this week. You know, you can't complain. The home form is still very good. Lincoln's a blip. We won't worry about that at all. Um, and we'll bounce back. We'll bounce back. The players won't be happy. The players won't be happy. And I think that's the whole thing about playing for the badge is actually they'll go away thinking that is one of the, probably one of the worst moments of my career. I'd hope. I'd hope. And they will bounce back because they'll want to do better themselves. I bet Sam Morsey's absolutely kicking himself, having sleepless nights, going, why have I not, not passed that to the left-hand side? Um, or while one's thinking, oh, why have I not fully come for that? Or why have I not stayed on my line? You know, um, we've got everything that we need to to go up still automatically. Um, and it doesn't even matter about what's going to happen around us in terms of points. I know, obviously, Exit of Plymouth later in it. I'm very, very interested to see if Exeter can nick a couple of points off them. Um, but if we keep doing our thing, we'll only grow. 
um, we'll only get more positive. McKenna's going to have that in his head now. Right, how on earth do I do I sort this game management thing out? Sort that out. The goals will keep coming, um, and and it it will be fine. It will be fine. Everybody needs to keep their heads up, and we're still going to the championship. Really love it, James. Love it, my <laughs> friend. Um, well, it's been a pleasure having you on the recap. Any other business? Any other notes? Um, as I said, Bracknell Town up next in the FA Cup. Very interesting tie that will be. Very different to the game against Charlton. But um, you're looking forward to that. And yeah, any other thoughts? Oh, no, I can't. I just love the FA Cup when it's like this, you know. Yeah. I just abs- It's the absolute magic of it. And, it, you know, it's absolutely fantastic for them. I saw the reaction of, of their, their players on Twitter just going absolutely mental when they've seen that they've got us. And it's just it's just lovely. Um, you know, it will be a good run out for, I don't know who will play, mind you. I think he'll probably play. I'd like to see Humphrey start after mm. his absolutely phenomenal performance against Port Vale uh, we scored Screamer um, a chance for some of our youngsters to get some minutes a chance for some of the boys who have been playing um, you know week in week out maybe JD have a rest maybe Burnsy have a rest maybe Morsey have a rest just to rest the, rest the legs and, and get back into the mind zone um, and yeah absolutely phenomenal and uh, happy Halloween yes my friend indeed uh, well <laughs> thanks for joining me James thanks everyone for watching another edition of the recap Bye for now.